Hi everyone, in this video we will be discussing and comparing the brains of fish and mammals. And here we will be looking at a shark brain and a sheep brain. So I just want to talk briefly about this figure here which shows the evolution of the vertebrate brain. And you can really see the progressive increase in size of the cerebrum. And another cool thing to note about this figure is the cerebellum which is the part of the brain concerned with equilibrium and motor coordination. It's actually largest in animals whose balance and precise motor movements are well developed. So pay attention to these structures and you will see how they differ in the shark versus in the sheep. Okay, now we are going to take a look at the shark brain. And the first structures we are showing here are the olfactory lobes. And you can kind of see the olfactory tracks that lead to the olfactory bulbs which these are the most anterior part of the brain located in the cavities behind the nostrils. So you can't see the bulbs very well in our shark, but you can see them in the diagram. This portion of the brain contains the smell receptors. And the olfactory bulbs are important for processing the information about odors. Next, if you look on top of the olfactory lobes, you'll see the small cerebral hemispheres, which are concerned largely with smell and taste and we actually pushed a probe into the cerebrum and you can see that it's hollow and its relative size is really tiny compared to the cerebrum in mammals. Now the next parts we see here are the optic lobes which control sight and in the diagram you can also see the optic nerves coming from each eye because those are responsible for transmitting impulses to the brain from the retinas at the back of the eyes. And the optic nerves are one of the 11 pairs of cranial nerves in the shark. Right above and behind the optic lobes, we actually have the cerebellum, which is the part of the brain that controls muscular coordination and balance. And you can see in the diagram that branching off of the cerebellum are two more sets of cranial nerves. And we want to pay attention to the oculomotor nerves, which actually arise from the ventral surface of the brain and the oculomotor nerves are really important for the motor system as they supply most of the muscles around and within the eyeballs. Right behind the cerebellum, we've got the medulla oblongata, which continues posteriorly to the spinal cord. And the medulla controls important reflexes and connects the brain to the spinal cord. Now moving on to the sheep brain, in this image here, you will see the three meninges called the dura mater, the arachnoid, and the pia matter. And these are the three membranes that line the skull and vertebral canal and enclose the brain and spinal cord. This is something that's different in mammals compared to fish because fish only have a singular membrane that holds fluid between the brain. And you'll see that the meninges have already been removed in our sheep brain, so you won't be able to see them for the remainder of this video. Here we have a lateral external view of our sheep brain, and you can see the cerebrum, which is the most anterior part of the brain, but in mammals it actually has four lobes, which I'll talk more about in a sec. But overall, the cerebrum is responsible for the integration of complex sensory and neural functions, as well as the initiation and coordination of voluntary activity in the body. We also have a good view of the cerebellum, which is the area of the hindbrain that controls muscle coordination. And once again, like in the shark, we have the medulla oblongata, which is a continuation of the spinal cord within the skull that forms the lowest part of the brainstem, and it contains control centers for the heart and the lungs. Lastly, one more structure that we see here that we didn't see in the shark is called the pons. And the pons is the part of the brainstem that links the medulla and the thalamus, which is another part of the brain that relays sensory information. Like I just mentioned, there are four lobes in the mammalian cerebrum, each of which is a localized and specialized sensory and motor area. So the frontal lobe is the largest of the four major lobes, and it is located at the front of each of the two hemispheres. It plays a part in smell as well as dealing with motor function. The parietal lobe is located posteriorly to the frontal lobe, and it handles all of the sensory information except for vision, hearing, and smell. We've got the occipital lobe, 
which receives and interprets visual sensory messages. And finally, the temporal lobe is involved in hearing and smell. Now we are looking at a ventral view of the brain and we can see a couple more structures here. We can once again see the pons and the medulla, but we can also see the optic nerves and the oculomotor nerve, which recall from our shark, those are the two nerves important for the sensory and motor functions of the eyes respectively. Next, we've got the pituitary gland, which we did not see in our shark. And the pituitary gland is the major endocrine gland that produces hormones and thus is important in controlling growth and development as well as the functioning of the other endocrine glands. Now the last structures here are the olfactory lobes or olfactory bulbs which you can get a nice look at as well from this front angle and you can see that they are located in the front of the brain underneath the frontal lobe and they are really important for processing smells. Lastly, here is an interior lateral look at our sheep brain, where you can once again see a lot of the structures that we've talked about. You can also see a couple others like the hypothalamus, which is the region of the forebrain that coordinates the autonomic nervous system, as well as the activity of the pituitary gland. And you can also see the thalamus, which like I briefly mentioned before, is responsible for relaying various sensory information.